right, all right. It's that time again. It's that Saturday morning, and I know you guys have been waited, waiting with bated breath. And for all y'all who want to know, I voted Friday. So I voted yesterday. I voted Monday. I got it in. And, and, and again, I, I know for some people it's difficult, and I've been going to vote ever since it started. I just got it done yesterday. And uh, while I was in, in line trying to get in to, to get my voting done, I was amazed that I thought it would be more people, you know, showing up to vote. So It was a whole two weeks, hadn't been over? Well, well it's been, been a while, but I'm just thinking that I was expecting more. And so, so I, I've had a lot of people tell me that within the community, within the hood, you know, I'm, I'm talking about black folks, that the vote is down. So that's part of what I'm going to talk about here today. That ain't right. Folks, folks, folks expecting all the noise to, I just thought, you know, it'd be some long lines like in the past and some other stuff would be happening, but it ain't happening. So we This gonna is what's go, keeping them in the same place, too. We're we going to go ahead and, and get this thing done. Let's I talk got about a, that. a couple of great guests here this morning, and we're going to get the show started. Uh, the way we normally do, so we're gonna gonna give you all the information about how you get in, how you call in, how you make stuff happen here on uh, Porch Talk Radio. Uh, we got uh, just so you know, you know, we expecting to have in Harrison Harris, so so uh, that's uh, Sally Harris, uh, school board, and Norma Harris, candidate for. She's got some fire in her, doesn't she? For sixty one. Goodness, uh, Sally's always been like that. <laughs> so so okay, let's do let's 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 take care of the business and then then, then we'll have fun. Business. As as we normally do. Okay, the, the call in number here for WTMP, Push Talk Radio, 813-251-9867. 813-251-9867. That's the call in the program. And I give that number out every show so folks don't have to call me and ask me what the number is. What's your number? Every show I give that number out. My cell phone number. So you can call me. Immediately. As many of you guys have learned to do. Through the course of the week, I get more and more cell phone calls. So so my cell phone number, Eddie Adams Jr., host Post Talk Radio, cell phone number 813-230-3300. One two, eight one three, two three zero three three one two. There you go. The website. The phone is ringing now. Thank you. The website <laughs> is porchtalkradio.com. It's the name same as the show. Porchtalkradio.com. Eddie Adams email address. Eddie, E D D I E at porchtalkradio.com. Don't get no simpler than that. Don't get no easier than that. All right, sponsors, the people who allow us to bring this show to you every Saturday morning. The Hillsborough County Republican Executive Committee been with us, helped us with the vision, helped us with the dream. Todd Jones, property appraiser. O-M-M, Inc. And PrintFast. That's John Desbrow and the guys out there. At uh, PrintFast, all your printing needs, one place. Phone number, 813-621-9444. 813-621-9444. And for those... This is this is kind of an inside thing, but this is our 100th show here on WTMP. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. Firecrackers, you know, fireworks, the whole nine yards, you know, you know, 100 shows. So, so I guess the big celebration point would be either 150 or 200, but you know, uh, you know. So, so yeah, this, it, it, it's it's a big deal. Uh, we're not gonna make a big deal of it, but I just wanted folks. To That's know. awesome. Kept the payments yeah. going. That's good. That's one hundred shows. Yeah, we got we got <laughs> it in. And uh, something else I wanted to make sure you guys know. We've been talking about this for a couple of weeks. 
And I want to do this before we start the other stuff. So again, get all this stuff out of the way. Uh, Rasmussen published a poll a couple of weeks ago, and it said that Trump's approval rating among black voters was 39 percent. That's hot. That's hot. And a lot of folks, especially black folks, did not believe it. So this is what we are, do, what we are doing. Uh, on my Facebook page, on Porch Talk Radio, on the American Black Conservative Movement, which is another group that I have on Facebook, uh, we're going to do a hashtag, and Tim, somebody who knows how to do that stuff, is going to do a hashtag called... I can draw you one. Hashtag, here we are. Trump. Trump. Hashtag, here we are, Trump. Catchy. The big thing about this, and, 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 and we setting it up, is that we're going to have a meeting. And at this meeting, there are going to be black Trump supporters. This meeting is going to be on September the 29th at Ho Wo Asian Restaurant. I'll leave that alone. And that's on 1719 South Del Mabry at 11.30 a.m. on the 29th. So, if you don't want your picture taken with a bunch of black conservatives and supporters of Trump, don't come. Keep hiding, keep crying. We, we, we are proud Trump supporters. And something else that came up, I have a few black friends and I have a few Hispanic friends who ask, can they come? And I said, of course. So, so if you're black and all Hispanic, minority, male, you say minority? males or female, I didn't say minority. I'm saying black and Hispanic. If you're human. You know, you can show up and take be in the photo. Because the whole purpose is to take a picture and we're going to do this hashtag here we are, Trump. And again, it's about it's about the fact that folks don't believe it's a lot of black supporters of Trump and, and that the number is what it is. And and because it represents something in the next election. Huge. Because it went from fourteen percent black supporters last vote. That was in two thousand sixteen, which Trump Trump had fourteen percent. And now, according to Rasmussen, it's 36% black voters. I'm just saying, reading between the line, if it is true, next election, we're going to have another four years of Trump. I'm just saying. Easy. And I know a lot of folks don't like it, and you listen to the news, or you listen to all that fake you. news, and, and, you, and you're having, you know, palpitations and, and stuff because you, you, you can't take it anymore. Well, guess what? If that news is true, if 36% of the black voters are going to vote for Mr. Trump the next, next cycle, 36, 39, and that number keeps growing, then I'm just telling you guys, uh, you're going to have to uh, continue. Because there was a lot of folks who said that Obama was not going to make it. And, and a lot of people bring up to me, oh, a lot of people didn't like Obama. Oh, it was hate. It was this. It was that. I'm going to tell you something. It's better to run a positive campaign than it is to run a negative campaign. So, uh, and, and, and our second Harris has arrived. So if, if you want to go drag a chair in, we'll, we'll be good. So. He's young. He can do it. So anyway, I wanted to get that. Through, get that through the process. So we're going to have a meeting of black Trump supporters September 29th at Hoa's Asian Restaurant on Del Mabry, 1719 South Del Mabry, 1130 on the 29th. So, so let's, uh, let's do this thing. Let's make some stuff happen. We're going to take this photo. We're going to get it published on Facebook and and uh, Twitter and some of these other places and uh, see if we can start something nationally. 
because I, I noticed a lot of black folks who are now taking pictures, black males are taking pictures and they posting them on the Facebook because I'm seeing them. But we just wanted to do this thing, give it an official, you know, get, 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 give it a, an, an official a place to start and then we'll kind of go from there. So now that I got both of my Harris's uh, in in the building, you know, here here at the Mac, uh, we gonna we gonna kind of do this in such a way. We gonna we gonna do Sally first, ladies first, always, and then we're gonna do Norman, you know, and and we gonna have a good show this morning. We're gonna provide you guys a lot of a lot of good information. We're They're sitting about, next to each other. One talk, of them is white. One of them is black. Talk about the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Thanks, Mr. guys. And Mr. <laughs> Mr. Obvious here. Is uh, is sitting here commentating as usual, but but again, we have a good show, and, and 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 this show is not designed to be a negative show. So if you got negative stuff to say about Keep people, it. about campaigns, about all that kind of stuff, pray about it. Hold it to next week, and then you don't have to you know wonder what the results are going to be. You would know, so you mm -hmm. can call in and say, okay, yeah, I thought so and so was going to win. But at this point, uh, again, we're only doing positive stuff. And, and, think, and thinking about positive stuff, uh, there was a vote taken yesterday. Matter of fact, I think it was a special meeting because the school board normally don't meet on Friday, mm -hmm. uh, in which uh, there was a vote taken. Uh, and since Sally is the chairman of the school board, that's Miss Sally Harris, is, and a good friend of mine and, and a person that I have supported for years, even, even before... Uh, you guys even knew about Sally Harris. I knew about Sally Harris in, in 2008, and I was running for U.S. Congress, and I started supporting her back then. So. And I started supporting you back then. Yeah, so so that's mutual gratitude, and, and I got a birth, that, that, that reminds me, I got a birthday party coming up, and, and I've been told to talk about the birthday party, but I'm just telling you guys, anybody that's listening to the show, tell your friends, Eddie Adams is having another birthday party October the 13th at my office, which is 234 Bullard Parkway. Two to six. You usually have a few hundred friends show up, don't you? I have a couple hundred friends show up every year, so so hopefully you guys yeah, will uh, join delicious. us. Food is delicious. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And of course, Eddie's there, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People come to see Sally. They don't come okay. to see me. So, so. With that said, and without any more of an introduction, good morning, Sally Harris, Chairman of the Hillsborough County School Board. How are you doing? Good morning. It is a gorgeous day outside. It's not raining right now, so yeah. we're in good shape. You looking just like a teacher too. You know, I look over there. I'm saying, hey, she got that look. She look, looks smile. just like just She's like a ready teacher. To do yes, yes, Let's go. yes. Let's go. Let's get it done. How do we find out about her? Well, all you have to do is go to votesallyharris.com and you get all the scoop. Or you can go to Facebook and you even get more scoop there because we post on that every single day, many times a day. So it's it's great. You get more scoop. You get more scoop. Yeah. <laughs> Two scoops. <laughs> Two scoops. So um, let me just say that um, I want to share with your listeners a little bit about why they should vote for me because I have been on the school board for four years, and in that four year period, I did work my way up to chairmanship which was very unusual to get it that quickly. And one of the reasons that I got there is because I am very neutral. I seem to be able to uh, mediate very easily, which is one of my highest skills, is being able to mediate different um, difficult situations. But I wanted to share with your listeners today a little bit about what, where we've come in four years. And, and I think that's important to understand. When I was elected and Mr. Akins was put in his position as superintendent by this existing board right now, we were $126 million in debt. And I mean in debt. We were behind. We were also had $100 billion in debt that we still owe from the schools built back in the late 90s and early 2000s when we had the growth in Tampa, which, by the way, listeners, you are getting ready to have another growth spurt in Tampa with thousands and thousands, over 15,000 permits in the South County area ready to build. So we're going to have that again. At that time in 2014, we had 18 failing schools, F. And you all know that quite well because it does seem to be largely in your neighborhoods. So you know what you're listening to. We also had a 73.5 graduation rate. We had a wide gap of, between our minorities 
and our early learning um, English learning uh, language learners. And then back then we only had 25,000 or 2,500, excuse me, vocational based certifications. People graduating from high school with a skill. Guess what? This year, this going into this school year, we took the 126 million debt and we have a balanced budget and we were able to put money into the contingency fund, which is the savings, which gives us a better credit rating, which keeps our uh, interest rate down on that $1 billion debt. We also were able to cut 1,900 employees, and a lot of that, everybody asked, yes, it was a lot of that in administration. It was at the top level, which is what the community, you the listeners, kept saying, get rid of the top. We did. And in that was $66 million cut in cost and expenses. In our 18 failing schools, this is where the success for your community is, we took those 18 failing schools and we got it down to five. And I can tell you, listeners, next year it won't be five. There is so much energy in this district to be able to get that off the market. We don't want any neighborhood to have failing schools. Our 73.5 graduation rate is now up to 83%. So guess what? More kids are graduating. And then our biggest accomplishment is for our minority students, and that is the gap is decreasing. So you're going to see more minority students rising to the top, which says a lot for those failing schools. And for our vocational, we went from 2,500 to 7,000 certified students walking away with a certification where they can get a job that pays them anywhere from 15 to $17 an hour starting pay from graduation. So I think we've had some right. success. What do you think? I think you got a bunch of success. Like you got a couple scoops of success there happening. I do, <laughs> but I want to share it because I want your listeners to vote for Sally Harris. At votesallyharris.com, check me out because I love our community. And I love this community as I've been a foster parent for 30 years. And when you're a foster parent, race, minority, it doesn't make a difference. You take the baby and you take them in your home. And by the way, I take girls, teenage girls, is who I had. So I took the ones nobody else wanted. And you still have all that hair. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, Sally. So... I see and I heard the news last night that the school board voted to try and get a half cent sales tax on the August 28th ballot. How that came about? Well, I'm glad you asked that because your <laughs> listeners need to know the inside story. All right. Okay, a year ago, this just, we, guys, we are in tough shape. You know because your kids are in schools without air conditioners and the air conditioners are breaking down. Our, some of our schools have needed air conditioners now for about 10 years, and we have put Band-Aids on them fixing them because when the cuts hit in 2007, when the economy fell apart, we really lost a lot of our income in the district. And we only have, the your school district is not a, a revenue generating business. We, we use money, we use the money, and the money only has four ways of getting to us. Impact fees, which comes from your developers. Community investment trust, and that one's about to run out in about five years. We have property taxes, and you know, they dropped the millage rate during that 2007 time span so that people could afford to keep their houses, but they never brought it back up when the economy changed. So in 2007, when they dropped it, we're still getting the same amount of money we did back then, and that's about 10 to 11 years ago. And so it, the whole cost of living is up, but we're not getting more money, even though you're seeing more development in, in Tampa. And then, of course, our state education fund, which by I hope by now you have seen 47 cents is all we got this year. So that being said, we knew we were in trouble. And although we had to clean our house up and, and get that deficit, and we had to cut staff, we did everything. We did what you asked. You said get clean your house up, we did it. So now we have to reach out to the community. And we need a half a penny sales tax. We'd love to have a whole penny, but we weren't gonna be greedy. We were asking for a half a cent. We went a year ago and put this in place. We've been dotting every I, crossing every T, and we were ready to do it. And we were planning to do it in March because that's the, the cost sensitive time to do it. 
And then all of a sudden, without our knowledge and without any discussion, all of a sudden transportation came in. Now, I'm not down in transportation because we, we, if you go anywhere in Tampa, Florida, you have a bottleneck of traffic. Try to get to work on time, okay? You try and realize the, the, the potholes in our roads. We've got need in, in every community, especially the black community, for sidewalks, for the kids to walk to school. So I'm not doubting that we don't need transportation, right. but I'm saying that they need to be parallel. This community has to stand behind education. People ask, when you move into a community or a neighborhood, what's the school like in my neighborhood? Well, if you can't say the school's an A, B, C school, do you want your kids to go there? No. So we have got to get our schools up, but we have to have money to do that. We are so short. So we decided that we had to go for that penny sales tax. And then, but we should have done it together with transportation. But since we didn't, we've got to get the community to recognize how desperate we are. We cannot put a band-aid on those air conditioners. We can't put a band-aid. We've got 32 schools to build in the next 15 years. We've got to start thinking ahead. You tell us plan ahead, we're trying. we got to have that tax. So we are putting that on the ballot, we hope, with the help of a lot of people to get it done in two weeks, and we hope the community will support that tax for us. Now, I've already voted, <laughs> and it wasn't on my ballot. So, so She's how, talking November, I guess, then, right? No, we're putting it on August 28th, I hope. We, I hope it makes it. Okay. We've got a lot of red tape to do. I hear you. Okay. It would not be on those. It will not. Or in the early voting, it wasn't there. Correct. Got it. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm it. sorry. You are absolutely right. I am totally November? that trip. November. Got it. Because it takes I, a while usually. You're, I'm sorry. You are absolutely right. Yeah. It'll be on the November ballot, okay. which we were all on. We were headed for the March ballot, but we may, we are hoping to make it to the November ballot. Okay. Cause see, cause, I rushed it. Because they got... Because see, cause, cause they got... And, and for those who, who, who are political in nature, you understand, because we got an election that will end Tuesday. Then we have another election that will happen in November. And then we have another election that will happen March of next year. So, so again, we got three or four different sets of candidates. You know, most of them will disappear Tuesday. So, so if you guys are uh, tired of it, uh, we got Go for me. You know, we got a bunch of <laughs> we got we got a we got a bunch of stuff going on. But I am telling you guys, you know, and girls, you know that Sally Harris has been a friend of our community, and she has and she is now the chairman of the Hillsborough County uh, Educational System. She's so she knows chairman what she's of the talking board. about. We're not talking any flunky. So here. so right, yeah, we got <laughs> SallyHarris.com. We got we got we got the the person. That has the information and she's sharing it with you uh, directly through Porch Talk Radio, of course, you know. Uh, but we the platform, and, and part of what we do is help make this community better. Give and, information. And, and if you got issues or if you got uh, topics and you got things, you know, you know, we take your call. So, so again, that's why I give my information out. And I don't just take your call on the air. I take your calls off the air. You don't take my and, calls. And if you got issues, <laughs> you call her ID. Of, he takes my calls. If well, you, <laughs> if you got things of importance to <laughs> say, ID. other than <laughs> rambling like Gabriel is currently doing, <laughs> you know, uh, we, we it's important that that we get this stuff to you, and it's important that you get an opportunity to listen to to people like Sally Harris because Sally is a person who who's not a figurehead. She is a person that's actually trying to get this stuff done. And she's bringing us real problems, real issues that they have to deal with at the school board. And and, and again, uh, you guys got some great board members. And 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 after the after Tuesday, because that's the one thing no matter whether you're a Democrat or Republican, the school board nominees, candidates were on your ballot. Cause uh, cause I had a meeting earlier today and I was telling the folks in the meeting, most of those folks that you guys are seeing and hearing out there, I couldn't vote for because it was a Republican primary, a Democratic primary. And we got a caller on the line right now. So, caller, welcome to Porch Talk Radio this Saturday morning. Uh, what say you? Vote for Sally Harris. All Let me right. tell you why. This is Joe Robinson, man. All right. When Sally Harris came in four years ago and cleaned and sent the great wicked witch of the West to New York City. 
Okay, the district started turning around when Miss Harris got there. Miss Harris is very quiet. She's very nice, and she's always pleasant. And she's the only one go to all the events and takes the pictures and show you what's going on in the district. But let me do even more thing. Yesterday she showed leadership as a chair. She let everybody talk. I was there. I, I didn't see a lot of people there at 10 o'clock. But she was there, and they did something that has never been done in the history of the school district, and that's get a referendum with a sales tax. Now, let me just tell you this. Vinnick and the boys, because I'm calling the FBI up next week, Vinnick and the boys in St. Pete Times have too much of a cozy relationship, and every time that Vinnick wants something, the Times do it because why? They done invested to save the Times. I'm putting it on the street. They done invested to save the Times, so the Times work for Vinnick because he got a lot of money with his little group over there, saving them from going bankrupt like the Temple Bay, like the Tribune did. And I'm tired of it. And that is why the transportation initiative got out there before the school district. The school district has been trying for years, but what they did, they went and backed Dota with a paga. They got a paga to do the study for the transportation referendum before the school board could get theirs. So the school board is trying to get it on the November ballot, okay, November 6th ballot, but it may not because the PAGA report has to be done, the county commission's got to vote to move it forward with the language. So what they did, they said, forget it. If it doesn't get on there in, in, in November, we're going to put it on there in March, and we'll have a special uh, collection with the city council late and the mayor, and we'll also have the county vote for it too. So right now, it's going to be on the ballot if it ain't November because of the PAGA people holding up and Vinick and them holding back and all this. Because everybody knows that it should have been a combination of both transportation and education at the same time on the same referendum and cut this uh, playing power out with the Vinick. And I love Vinick and them. I love what they're doing on Channel side. But we got more immediate needs in the black community, Eddie. We got more committed, immediate needs in the inner city, uh, Eddie. And we need to cut this nonsense out because they don't. I will reactivate the FBI to investigate everybody. I told them to back down, but we need to cut this nonsense out. Let's get Sally Hazard back in office because she's doing a great job, and she knows what she's doing. It ain't $100 billion, Miss Sally. It's $1 billion of back debt. And everybody knows air conditions hot. Students teach in the first time the union and Joe Robinson finally agreed on setting up the school board meetings. The union and the PTA and the and, and, and the union and PTA and Joe Robinson agreed on something, and it was about this self that referendum. I'm for it. Everybody pushing it. Hopefully we can get it on November. If not, it'll be on the March ballot, and it may even make me run for city council district five if it's got to be on the ballot in March just to make it happen. And that's all I want to say, Eddie, because y'all know how I roll. I'm telling the truth, and let's cut the nonsense out. I will beg the FBI to come in and investigate the times and that just in arrangement. Now, they can do whatever they want to me because I ain't scared. I don't play that, and I got powerful people that support me. And that's all I want to say. Vote for Sally Harris because she do the right thing, and everybody loves Sally Harris, and there's no reason to replace Sally Harris. Let her continue and finish up four more terms, four more years, okay? And that's all I want to say. Let's cut the nonsense out. Thank Have you, a nice Joe. day. Thank you, Joe. Hallelujah. All right. All Thank right. you, Joe. Pass the plate. So, so uh, I guess everybody know where Joe stands <laughs> 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 on Saturday, Harris. So, 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 and, and again, Joe, Joe is one of the few people in this community who has his facts together. So not, not often do you hear Joe and you come back and say, oh, he's lying. Because uh, Joe is one of the people who do his research. And when he called into the show, he's always got helpful information and Joe know I respect him because I understand the battle that he's fighting constantly uh, to make a difference within this community. All right, got another caller. Welcome to Porch Talk Radio this morning, caller. What say you? Oh, uh, this is Dr. Wright, uh, Sam Wright. Uh, so you, Eddie Adams, is how I have. Yes. I, I did uh, listen to the discussion relative to the needs for the school, the school system at our schools, and I just wanted to, you know, recommend to. Uh, the Honorable Sally Harris and other members of the school board to make sure that they vet our budget and make sure they be able to make sure the citizenry know exactly what their needs are before they do a referendum. And that's what I understand. That when I read the article the other day, they said they, they didn't really have a real complete budget of how much those expenses will cost. So make sure you put it out there so we'll 
will know what to do in November. Yes, sir. We try to be very transparent, and it will be on the website. And they uh, are putting together those figures right now. All right. Well, thanks, so, thanks so much. We support this salary. You continue the good work, okay? Thank you. Hello, Dr. Reich. This is Norman Harris. <laughs> oh, how are you doing, Norman? I wanted to say to our listening audience that uh, we mentioned uh, Karen Skyers and uh, Diane Hart on uh, Michelle B. Patty's show, but I didn't hear Norman Harris' name being mentioned. We have an attorney, and Norman Harris is a phenomenal gentleman and talented across the board, and certainly is an excellent choice for District 61. I just wanted to put that out there so to be crystal clear that we got another phenomenal candidate running for District 61. Thank you, Dr. Wright, and uh, Mr. Eddie Adams understands that, too. That's why he's constantly having me on his show. <laughs> well, that's good. We need, we need the public to know that. When it's all said and done, Norman Harris is a phenomenal guy and will help the community throughout. That's what we want the world to know. Take good care. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wright. Uh, again, uh, some of these folks who are calling uh, this morning have impeccable credentials uh, to be able to speak for the work that they have done because Dr. Wright is the founder of the Black Heritage Festival and other things that he's done throughout the years for this community and the University of South Florida. So again, thank you, Dr. Wright, for calling in. And uh, Sally, closing remarks, what do you want to say? Well, I just want to say, just like you said, um, we're all in this together. And I do want to be reelected for four more years because my work is not done. I've got some insurance issues that I want to try to get the cost of insurance down for our teachers because it's outrageous right now. Oh. Uh, it's very bad. And I, I just have a passion to help the kids. We've got, even though those certificates are up on our vocational program, I think that our community, especially in our District 5 area, we have really got to help those students know that if they don't have a desire to go to college, that we can give them a skill where they can walk out of high school and get a very good paying job where they can really feel good about their future. So that's my goal for the next four years, and I just hope that your listeners will help put me there, votesallyharris.com, but most importantly, please go vote. August 28th does matter. And if you can go out there, you can, it's open all day today, guys, till what, 5 o'clock, I think. Yeah, yeah. So please, just stop by the library and vote today. That's early voting. And if you can't get there today, please, please go vote on Tuesday. It means everything. Your voice is what can decide an election. You literally, if you all go out and vote now, you literally can decide where it goes. So please don't forget to vote. All right, and we got another caller. Uh, again, the phone lines are hot this morning, uh, and I know it's because of Harris and Harris, uh, and, and the other Harris. Not and, related and, that we know and, of. Yeah, the, the other Harris hasn't, hasn't even started talking yeah. yet, but uh, but we're going to uh, take this call. Welcome this, call, this this morning to Post Talk Radio. Caller, what say you? Hey, good morning. My name is Robin Lockett. I'm the Hillsborough County Democratic Black Caucus President. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, just, thank you, thank you. Just tuning in, and I wanted to make a comment about the young man, uh, Norman Harris. Uh, during the journey of the Black Caucus, we held forums, we held a listening tour, we listened to the communities, which are members of the organization, and we have chosen, we voted, and we voted for Norman Harris to be our nom nominee for a state representative, District 61, and we're very proud of our choice. So congratulations, Norman. Um, I know uh, when this is over, you'll do a great job. Uh, we're looking for, I don't live in uh, East Tampa, but I support it 100%. Um, and East Tampa needs stability, right? Um, the unfortunate thing about it, they've had great uh, candidates, um, electors that have come through and gone on the bigger and better things. But right now, you know, I see in regards to stability, people staying there uh, with aspirations of doing what is right for the community. Uh, and I'm proud of the selection that we chose. So congratulations, Norman. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. As you underscored the uh, need uh, for stability, I, uh, I offer stability. And I'm very proud, uh, Ms. Lockett and uh, Mr. Adams, uh, of the fact that I'm not a part of uh, any political clique that cycle uh, candidates through the district. 
Yeah. Uh, I am unbought and I'm unbossed. <laughs> and, I'm, I like that. and I'm in a good position to do what I'm supposed to do, be a uh, public servant and serve that not the special interest of special interest groups and political groups, uh, but the special need of my constituents. And since Norman has started his his uh, his his fifteen minutes of fame here on the show, uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm going to say something because I because I listen to the community. I listen to the call, and something upset me when when people say it's somebody's time. Mm -hmm. I I really don't believe it uh, because your time your time to get elected is when when you actually get elected. Correct. You know, uh, and and I hear a lot of folks say, well. Well, so and so and so ain't qualified. Let me let me explain something else to you. And I meant to say ain't. When you go down there and fill out all that paperwork and and pay your dollars or, or you get your petitions or whatever you do, at that point you are qualified. Absolutely. Because because the people people got some some, some mythological thing in their head that makes you qualified to be any a. Uh, uh, in any candidate for any of these different positions that's up. If you're not qualified, even if you pay your money, they're not going to put your name on the ballot. I'm just going to tell you. So so there are some folks that determine who's qualified and who's not qualified. And if you don't meet the minimum qualifications, you can't be a candidate for those offices. And somebody in the supervisor of elections office is going to let you know that. So, so the fact that we got folks who want this slot, again... <laughs> You know, I think that's one of the problems that has happened within our community. We got people who take their first step in the politics, and it's just a stepping stone. They actually don't want to be where they are. They they run for stuff. You get turned out. You serve your slot, and you serve your people. Whether you did it well or not is a whole nother thing. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, 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 if you won for something, win, and in one turn, you read your own press clippings, and your press clippings keep telling you you more than what you actually are. It's lying to you. It's no different than an athlete thinking he's better than his last game. I'm telling you, your last game is what everybody in the world is gonna see. If get hurt in your last game, and and, and watch what happens. <laughs> somebody, somebody, the next game will be playing in your slot. So, so you're not so important and so big and so bad that you can't be replaced. Anybody can. Going in, actually wanting to get elected for the slot that you're running for is important. All right, we got a call on the line. Welcome to Porch Talk Radio this Saturday morning. Uh, we have one of the two Harrises still with us. Uh, what say you? Yes, I, I would like to, uh, my name is Ricky, I would like to ask uh, Ms. Harris a question since she was on the school board then. Uh, about maybe a year or so in the last budget cycle, uh, I'm not sure the budget cycle before the uh, school board well, decided to sir, decrease. Sir, uh, before you go on, Ms. Harris has already left. Okay, okay, well then sir. I can't. It was, it was about, okay, well it, this was specific for her. All right, thank you. Well, thank you, thank you. All right. All right, All right Norman, go ahead. Tell her. Tell us your story. Tell us why we're gonna vote for you, even though I can't because I'm a because I'm a Republican, uh, conservative, Trump supporter, all those other things. But again, with that being said, for the Democrats who can actually vote for you, tell them why they should vote for you, and specifically why you're the best candidate in that race. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Yes, my name is Norman Harris. I'll say it again. My name is Norman Harris. I'm running for State House Representative, District 61. Um, you can find me on www.normanharris.org. Uh, you could contact me, Norman Harris 4 F O R 61 at gmail.com. You know, uh, Mr. Adams, uh, for me, it's a privilege to be able to run, uh, to serve in public office, and I don't have an attitude of entitlement um, because. Whenever an opportunity presents itself to serve, that is a privilege. Um, and it's a privilege for me to be before you now asking for your vote. Early voting started August the 13th, uh, and it goes until tomorrow, August the 26th. And voting day is Tuesday, August the 28th. 
Uh, if you live in District 61, there's only one good choice to vote for, and that is Norman Harris. I am the second name uh, in that section uh, on, on your ballot. Now, I will, I will also mention that uh, in response to uh, a comment that Dr. Wright uh, called in, and, and he expressed that my name was not mentioned when other names were mentioned. And that's not the first time. Uh, the <laughs> Temple Bay Times published something uh, maybe a little over a month ago and mentioned Diane Hart and Karen Skyers. Norman Harris' name was not mentioned. I was at a um, forum at Middleton uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, the Sentinel uh, put out a, a, a article uh, mentioning Diane Hart and Karen Skyers. Norman, Hain was, Norman Harris' name was not mentioned. Um, and and, and it's, it saddens me only because it seems that uh, the district is conditioned to contention. And if you want to be mentioned, it seems uh, you got to be contentious. Um, I am qualified, and, and I am most qualified for the position, um, but I'm not running a contentious race. Contentious. I am focused on my race and focused on the... Uh, 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 citizens of District 61. Why am I m most qualified? Well, I think um, the most qualified candidate uh, possess two qualities. One, uh, understanding of law. I am a graduate of Mercer University School of Law. And if I may add, um, I also have a Master's in Divinity from Emory University, Candler School of Theology. And why is that important? Well, to me, that's important because that has helped me to develop a framework to reflect upon social and ethical issues from a theological perspective, which is very advantageous to um, a position as the position that I'm running for. Not only am I academically qualified, but I have experience. I have experience with law. I came to this community and opened my practice right here in the community uh, on 7th Avenue. Um, and I practiced in the community and done a lot of work in District 61. I practiced as a criminal defense attorney. I practiced as a family law attorney. I practiced as a contract attorney. And I practiced as a personal injury attorney. Here I am today, still in the community, still in private practice. My office now is uh, downtown of Ashley Drive. Uh, the name of my firm is Champion for Justice. I've been champion, I've been champion, been a, I've been a champion uh, in the community uh, far long before I decided to file um, to run for state house representative. Um, I didn't have to stop my campaign to go and address issues in the community currently because I've been in the community doing things uh, in the community um, ever since I've been here, even when Trayvon, the Trayvon Martin situation, um, Trayvon Martin, I, I was one of the main ones marching um, for the arrest of Zimmerman. I was attending press conferences right here in Tampa with respect to that. I developed an interest in Stand Your Ground then. I didn't have to wait till now after I filed to run to uh, develop an interest in that. Not only that, I have been connected with community and done workshops in the community on knowing your rights. Um, there was a lot of uh, situations across the country about uh, law enforcement and, and community. So I did a, uh, along with another attorney, a uh, friend of mine, did a Know Your Rights uh, seminar. I've done uh, seminars on criminal justice reform, particularly uh, with the AME Church. I've done a lot of work in the community with the Church of God in Christ. Bishop Matthew Williams, he's the Bishop of the Southwestern Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ. I've done a lot of work, done presentations and seminars with that church organization. I've done a lot of work with the NAACP, which is the oldest um, uh, civil rights organization in the country. Um, and when I say I've done work, I mean volunteer work, um, work that I'm not paid to do, work that I do because I understand uh, in order to avoid being a social parasite, you got to be a social engineer, and you got to be able to like do that. things in the community even when you're not paid to do it. I have paid light bills in the community. I have paid for cars that were repossessed to be uh, returned to 
uh, owners in the community. And no, I didn't go publish an article in the Sentinel about it. Because you don't have to make a big noise about what you do. You just do what you do. And you do it from your heart. And that goes a lot. Um, so I, I'm very sincere. I'm very sincere about what, who I am and what I do. I'm very sincere about the community. I'm very sincere about the need for stability in the community. I love Representative Reed. Representative Reed was very connected with the community and she provided stability in the community and the community still loves uh, Representative Reed because of what she contributed to the community. Betty Reed. Just, just, for, the, just for the record so folks know, Sister Betty Reed. Yes. Representative Betty Reed, the Honorable. The Honorable Betty Reed. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I have a vision for District, District 61. I have a vision of, first of all, leadership with stability and integrity. And some people say, well, I haven't heard of you. Well, well, I've been here. Uh, my best response to that is uh, good news just does not travel as quickly as bad news. If I were if I were cheating people out of out of money, and if I were sleeping around with every person in town, or if I were stealing or doing other bad things, everybody would know about me. But you know, good news just does not travel sometimes as quickly as bad news uh, 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 travels. But the good thing about running for public office, it establishes a platform for you to be known. And uh, I'm very um, gracious and humble um, to be in this position. And I do have a vision of uh, vision for, for, for District 61, which includes stability and integrity, but it also includes upward mobility and um, economic development and equal distribution of wealth. And that's why I really appreciate, uh, Mr. Adams, your initiative about the uh, black credit union. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that goes right to the core. Of, of, of what we need with respect to um, economic development. Uh, that, has, that has been talk concerning predatory lenders. Well, uh, what would we offer the community to substitute for what we consider to be uh, unhealthy for our community? Well, I think that black credit unit is, is an alternative, a positive alternative. Yes, and, and, it's, and it's something that involves the entire community. Uh, it entires financial freedom, uh, which a lot of folks talk about financial freedom, but many folks aren't financially free. And, and, and there's a certain learning curve that goes with managing and handling your own money. Uh, a lot of time and a lot of families, you know, that's something that they don't teach you. Uh, but, but again, our community don't look like South Tampa. Uh, it don't look like North Tampa. Uh, you know, it looks like it looks the way it does because we don't have our own financial institution. And once we get our own financial institution within the community, we could actually buy property within the community and tear down all those ugly eyesores that everybody else uh, notices and, and, and we just kind of have to live with. So so part of this whole process is, is how do we do things for the community, become and continue to be community servants. Uh, right. which is a whole class of politicians that we never get. Uh, we get politicians who want to get elected, but they, they don't want to do the community service, and, and the community service should come first, and then getting elected and, and showing us what you got comes later. And and just to take care, a couple bits of business for folks who listen to the show, We gotta I, I, since we're talking about politics, i got to at least give you guys all my candidates uh, who I'm supporting. So if you have not voted, you know, to go vote for these guys because, again, you know, next week, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you know, all my guys got elected. So, so, so uh, that, that, <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw it, throw it out there. We're going to speak it into existence. Okay. So, we're going to do all my candidates. So, these, these are my candidates, folks. I'm supporting people on my list. Uh, so, you can kind of write these down and take it into the polling place, place with you. And then I'm going to do on this day in history. And then we'll come back and normal, normal to finish out the show. All right, these are my candidates. Folks that Eddie Adams Jr., Porch Talk Radio, have supported, is supporting, you know, these are folks I voted for. All of them are not on my ballot, but against the ones that are, definitely are the ones I voted for. Rick Scott for Senate. Adam Putnam for Governor. Chad Cronister for Sheriff. 
Ross Spano for Congress, District 15. Ashley Moody for Attorney General. Sally A. Harris, School Board, District 2. Melissa Spivey, School Board, District 4. Adam Banter, the second. County Court Judge, Group 2. Jared Smith, County Court Judge, Group 5. Mike, es Mike Islick for County Court Judge, District 8. Sissy Boza Selvin for Circuit Court Judge, District 25. Dana Young for State Senate, District 18. Tom Lee for State Senate, District 18. District 20, I'm sorry, Tom Lee, State Senate, District 20. Rhonda Storms, State House, 59. Norman Harris, yes, State House, 61. Jamie Grant, State House, 64. Todd Marks, County Commissioner, District 7. David A. Stras, Mayor, City of Tampa. Walter Smith II, for City Council, District 1. Those are my, my, my folks who... Who, if you got a, a one of those, uh, 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 what they call them, uh, the this, this slips that you take in with you when you go to vote. Yes, slate know, card. Slate card. Yes, that's my slate. So, uh, so those who wrote those down, if you if you can't remember them, go to go to porchtalkradio.com. They are there. Also, on this day in history, I know some of you guys look forward to this. Some of you guys don't. All right, <laughs> on this day in history, on, on August the 25th, 1875, Captain Matthew Webb swam from Dover, England to Calisi, France, making him the first person to swim the English Channel. The feat took him 22 hours. On this day, 1916, the National Park Service was established as part of the U.S. Department of Interior. On this day, August 25th, 1925, A. Philip Randolph founds the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. A lot, of, a lot of folks don't remember and a lot of folks don't understand. <clears throat> but for, for black folks, that's important. On this day, 1941, U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt signed the bill appropriating funds for the, con for the construction of the Pentagon. And on this day, 1997, the tobacco industry agreed to an 11 Point three billion dollars with the state of Florida. Yeah. So, as we move on, uh, guys, again, thank you for listening to the show. We got a lot of stuff that's going on. I have to remind you, black folks, you know that your money can't be spent willy nilly. Uh, again, if this community is going to do what it needs to do, you got to think about your dollars and who you're spending your dollars with. Your dollars have to have power. They have to have purpose. And they have to have vision. Mm -hmm. Vision. Because like like uh, Sally was saying, you know, we can change everything. It's just a matter of us getting together, coming up with the right plan, and making some stuff happen. Norman is one of those people who can make some stuff happen, who has a plan. Because when you're a candidate and you're running for an office, you got to have vision. You can't lead people if you don't know where you're going. Correct. So, so you got to have a plan not only for yourself, and you got to have a plan for the people that's following you and the people that's voting for you. Uh, and again, leadership is not something that just comes to you because you were born. Leadership is something you got to learn. It has to be developed, and it has to be action-oriented, because leadership is a verb. Absolutely. Some people are proven assistants, but right. Norman Harris is a proven leader. 
you go. All right, jump that's right catchy. on that. That's yeah, jump, jump right on that. that yes, that, sir. That, that's good. Uh, so, sir. Saw that opportunity and jumped on it. Yes, sir. Just because, because I can't make somebody a leader because I say you're a leader. You know, mm-hmm. you got people saying, well, follow someone, so-and-so. Okay, are you following them? Do they know where they're going? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when they get there, how will you know they got where they were going because they ain't said nothing about where they were going the whole time. They just kept asking for you to vote for them and asking for you to believe in what they were saying. Absolutely. And, and, and half of the time, you know, at, like I like I had a meeting this morning with the candidate, and she was just saying that she, they was going to do, I'm going to tell you what, she said we're going to provide affordable houses. There's not a county commissioner in Hillsborough County that's building affordable houses. So if you ain't a building affordable houses, <laughs> then how can you make people have affordable houses? How can you make that promise? I'm going to I'm gonna make affordable housing happen in Hillsborough County. It don't happen by a county commissioner. County commissioners ain't building houses. That ain't their job. <laughs> I'm just saying. It sounds it's good. Always the details. And, and it makes people feel nice and warm and fuzzy. But but unless you're building houses, you can't guarantee people that, that they're going to have a house out there that they can afford. That's why there's a problem. Right. Mm-hmm. And let me just say this uh, right before we go. Um, I, I am a Democrat, and I'm running for State House Representative District 61, which is a Democratic seat. This is a Republican show. Mr. Adam, you are a Republican. I thank you. I thank you for um, recognizing integrity. I thank you for recognizing competence and quality. Uh, And what we see right here this morning is what we need in the community and what will be needed in Tallahassee. You can talk about reaching across the aisles in Tallahassee, but if you don't do it right here, Mm -hmm. uh, how would it happen or why should we believe you um and i say that because i just want to clear up some things that's circulating in the community uh you know I, i'm not, not going to even repeat it because I'm, it's i don't foolishness. I, it's foolishness oh. all right we, um, get, we get to wrap it up so so go ahead go ahead and finish your thought but vote norman harris i am on your ballot if you are a resident of district 61 um i am the second name on the ballot and the only name that you should vote for um, if you're doing early voting, uh, Norman Harris. If you are continuing to do a mail-in ballot, Norman Harris. On election day, grab a neighbor, grab a friend, grab a family member. I don't Come even care. Now. Grab Preach an it. enemy. Preacher, brother. I don't care if you're a business exec. I don't care if you're a street sweeper. Oh, Your vote now. is equally oh, important. Goodness. Vote Norman Harris. All right, I think Norma got his point in. And thank you for yeah. listening to Poor Talk Radio on another Saturday morning. Hopefully we've provided you with some information that you can use in your daily life because that's what we try to do every Saturday here. And uh, Trent, uh, Gus Trent has a rodeo fest this afternoon, oh, 6 o'clock at the Florida State Fair. Uh, go support the brother because uh, he's got a great thing that he's doing and that's for the community. Until next week, uh, same bad time, same bad station. We love you so very much. Look forward to seeing you and hearing you again next week. Love you. Bye-bye. God bless America.